OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And people who struggle with it want everything to be perfect, everything to be in its place. If not, there is something gnawing at their mind. Their mind cannot rest until everything is either perfect or they have performed some type of ritual to put their mind at ease. My father uh, suffered through that. I went through that a little bit when I was younger. And this is what I would tell you in a natural, healthy way that can help some people. One is minimalism, having less stuff, is good for people with OCD. Why? Because the more stuff you have, the more your mind has to take care of it, think about it, and organize it, and worry about it. Also, someone who has OCD should not be part of an HOA, a homeowner's association. Why? Because there's a lot of common property or common amenities that you as an individual are not solely in control of. You are subject to HOA rules or subject to landscapers. My father used to get in fights with landscapers in an HOA because they didn't do the lawn the way he likes. So people who have OCD are very particular. And so if other people are sharing in what they have, then it will cause arguments, it'll cause fights, and it will just, again, add to the problem of dealing and coping with OCD. So in my opinion, a person with OCD should have a small studio apartment or a very small house, and I think they would probably do better to rent. Why? Because even if they weren't part of an HOA, if they have a home, and especially a bigger home, taking care of the lawn will destroy their mental health in addition to going to a job or living life because there's too much on their mind. They don't deal with that high capacity of stress well. And I think that home ownership has so much maintenance, so much entanglement, that a person with OCD is almost asking for trouble. They're almost demanding so much on their mind, even if they can afford it, that I think for some, not all, there's no exact science, but I think they're going to hurt themselves. I think people with OCD probably will tend to do better single. Why? Because again, when you share uh, something with someone else, you are not fully in control. Okay. And so, like I said, with HOA, you share common amenities. In a relationship, you share your life. So I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's something to think about. It's something that if you care about your mental health, your emotional well-being, and if you want to cope with some of the issues that you're faced with as an individual, I think these are all healthy things to do. Now, these principles can help people even without OCD. Like, I really don't struggle with things being in a particular order. I don't struggle with rituals anymore, really, or anything like that. So, But I have empathy. I have an understanding of the mindset, seeing it and experiencing it some myself. So, stay single. Don't do too many shared amenities. And I think even a shared gym. Uh, people struggle with a shared gym because again, it's not just yours. If, if you're going to go to a gym that's shared, you're probably better going at night, uh, when no one's there. Why? Because you're going to be particular about how you want certain things. It's a particular mind. It's a perfectionist mind. Now, the good news is that energy, that perfectionism can be focused instead of taking care of lawn, focused on taking care of yourself, focused on starting a business. People with OCD can be highly productive because there's a concentrated energy that wants to get something done. But you can waste that energy on fighting with the HOA, on fighting with your uh, spouse, on fighting with the people at your gym, instead of using that, harnessing that same energy for productive, healthy things in your life, starting a business, working out by yourself, etc. So we only have so much energy. And the key is to use your energy effectively and efficiently. If not, your own energy can destroy yourself through stress, through aggravation, through anger, and through being redirected in into things that serve no 
positive, productive purpose and that you are not fully in control of. So we must be very cautious uh, of knowing ourselves, of positioning ourselves in the right environment because like on a, a sports team, the main purpose of a coach is to position the players where they have the most talent and away from the areas that they are the weakest. Okay, So if you have someone that is great on defense but stinks on offense, obviously you want to put them in the position on defense that they play the best because that's their strength. And you want to keep them away from shooting a three-pointer, right? So life is about learning your strengths and weaknesses, focusing and positioning yourself in your strengths, getting away from putting yourself in a position where your weakness is magnified, instead putting yourself in a position where your strength is magnified. And again, being efficient and effective with your energy so that you can live your best life. There is no perfect life. Okay. There is no perfect person. Uh, you're going to fail. You're going to have bad times, good times. You got to go through trial and error. You got to learn yourself, grow. But what we try to do as we get older is progressively get better through knowing ourselves, through knowledge, through experience, and through positioning. And that's what I want to share in this video to give you some practical, basic, healthy, wholesome, general insights. Okay, everyone is different. And everyone has to go on their own journey, but I think everything I said in this video uh, is very practical, common sense, and good. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you to all my members. If you'd like to be a member and support the channel, click that blue join button. You'll get unlimited access to all my live feeds. Thank you. Gratitude to all my members. Click the thumbs up. Check my playlist out if you want on my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.